Can I read the opening verse of the gospel reading from the uh, New Revised Standard Version? Because it's very simple. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Now, NRSV has all sorts of uh, good qualities, but that verse is not one of its best moments because the word it translates as piety doesn't mean piety at all. In the old King James Version, it used to say, uh, doing your good works. But if you look at the end of chapter six, you will remember that there is a verse which says, seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and everything else will be given to you. And the word righteousness is the very word that is used right here at the beginning of our gospel reading. This passage is about doing the right thing and about putting things right. It's about being modest in doing it. Now, I need to tell you a little story about an Australian cricketer who at the end of a, another Ash, Ashes series turned to the uh, poor English guy and said, you know what I like about you, Poms? You're so good at losing, but then you've had plenty of practice. And that is kind of uh, how it feels for us. We're supposed to be very good at losing. There's a sense in which modesty in defeat and modesty in victory is something that we admire. And it's certainly what Jesus is calling us to here. But in days when people like you and some people in my country are having to go back into a kind of lock down again because this wretched virus has uh, shown that it can't be defeated viruses can't be defeated what happens is we control them to a certain extent but they keep coming back again and some of you in melbourne are experiencing that moment of having to be locked down and for somebody to tell you to practice your piety in private is a bit ironic really um, there's nowhere else you could do it if only i could get outside I'd like to show people that I'm a good person. Can we do right without making a fuss? And of course, sometimes we need to make a fuss and we think about the events that we've seen, unfortunately in Britain, as well as in the States, of police officers kneeling on the necks of black people, unfortunately in the States with the tragic killing of that man, but in, in Britain, it's happened recently, the guy didn't die, but police officers have knelt on the face, on the neck of a black man and told him to be still and to do what he's told and to get down, you ordinary black person. Black lives matter and sometimes we have to make a fuss. Sometimes just being good in private won't do. But in our daily living, most of the time, we need to make sure that what we're doing is getting things right, which is what righteousness at the beginning of that chapter means. It means getting things right between ourselves and other people, between ourselves and our neighbours, between ourselves and the people who are in need, between ourselves and the people we despise, which in my case means the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Now, modesty is very difficult. I had a, an Old Testament tutor who's still alive in his 90s, God bless him. He used to say, have you read my book, Humility and How I Achieved It? It's a bestseller, you know. We have a nursery rhyme in Britain which goes like this. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating his Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I? And what the rhyme is designed to do is to tell us, stop making a fuss when things just turn out as they turn out. 
don't draw attention to yourself because you've just done something which is quite normal. But we need to remember that in this passage that we have before us, Jesus' sense of humour keeps poking out. Now, I don't know about you, but I haven't met many people who sort of enrol a brass band before they put money in the collection plate. So this stuff about don't sound a trumpet before you do your, is a joke and you are allowed to laugh. Similarly, the thing about the hypocrites is very interesting. We have come to think of hypocrites as bad people. But in Jesus' day, although hypocrites have begun to get a bad name, there was still the memory of what a hypocrite was. A hypocrite was an actor. And Greek actors used to wear masks so that instead of wearing makeup, they wore a mask. It was a specially designed mask which would project the voice. And they put on a different character. They pretended to be somebody that they weren't. I'm not really this mad murderer in a Greek play. I am actually still Joe Smith, but I've put on this mask so that I take on a different character. And actors are people who are, play, played, who are paid to pretend to be somebody else. That's what an actor is. And Jesus says, when you're doing, living in your daily life, don't become an actor. Now, I've got lots of friends who are actors because I went to a school which started the National Youth Theatre in Great Britain. And um, many of my friends have had terrific careers in, in, um, in theatre. You'll have heard of some of them, but I'm not going to name drop, um, apart to say, shall we say, Simon Ward, for example, who used Young Winston in that film years ago. Uh, I've been on the stage with Simon and uh, I look pretty stupid compared with him. But actors, you can be an actor and you can be a Christian. What you can't do is to put on an act and expect to impress God. That's the point. Now, as I say, there are some people who are quite good at drawing attention to how good they are in the world. And of course, we like to watch them when the pedestal crumbles and they fall to the ground. It's a great moment for us all. Isn't it? We love to put people on pedestals and then kick them off. And Jesus says, you know, just don't do that. He says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. When I was a young lad and starting to play the piano quite seriously, I was, I was tackling a piece by a composer called Liszt, who's quite difficult to play. And my grandfather, who was a professional musician, said, ah, he said, you've been listening to the Bible. You're not letting your left hand know what your right hand's doing. And I've, I've heard quite a few pianists who've had that same struggle. What Jesus is asking us to do is just to focus on the person in front of us at that moment and to deal with them in love and in charity and in mercy and not to make a big song and dance about it. Throughout the Gospels, we remember that so often things work secretly. The seed that falls into the ground, and nobody knows how, but the harvest grows. The wind that blows, and you don't know where it's coming from or why it's coming from, but it just blows. Nicodemus, who is described as the teacher in Israel, the teacher in Israel, and he comes to Jesus by night, in secret, from John's point of view. More people meet Jesus on the road to Emmaus than they do on the road to Damascus. Most of us do not have Damascus road experiences. If you have, brilliant. But most of us come to faith, if we come to faith, because somebody has walked quietly beside us and just let us be the focus of their attention and their love and their mercy. And that's what's changed who we are 
and what we have become. Doing the right thing might go unnoticed, but it doesn't go fruitless, and there's a difference. Even if the harvest doesn't fall into our laps, God works the harvest when we do right, quite simply, one to one. When Jesus was alive, uh, the Romans were busy sort of organizing the world, and they had a saying, let justice be done even though the heavens fall. In other words, it doesn't matter how great and how mighty you are, you still have to be doing right. And if you don't, Caesar may come off the throne and all the rest of it, but we must do the right thing. The Christian response to that is, let righteousness be done so that the kingdom of heaven may come on earth in our day. Each time we pray, we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Know this, that the one in the heavens knows your tribulation, knows the trials that you are going through right now. And he will keep you in the right way if you will trust him to do right without fuss and without favour. And if you will do right without fuss and without favour. When judges in the United Kingdom are sworn in to become judges, they have to say that they will do all manner of rights to all manner of man or woman without fear and without favour. We must do right. We must do what is right. And we don't have to worry for ourselves whether anybody else notices. Can I finish with a prayer? It's not a prayer of mine. It's a prayer you may well recognise. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do thy will.